Prior to the advent of Europeans in the late 15th century, the Americas were inhabited by a diverse set of indigenous cultures and ethnicities. Although many of these cultures have ceased to exist, they live on in both the archaeological record and their contemporary descendants. But who really are the first Americans? Where did these people come from? And when did they reach the New World? These are two fundamental questions of American archaeology, but they are contentious ones, sparking passionate debate and a variety of competing theories. In this video, I am going to present the theory of the peopling of the Americas, which is the most widely respected and accepted by the academic community. In 1932, the archaeologist Edgar B. Howard heard that a construction crew near Clovis, New Mexico had exposed a deposit of bison and mammoth bones. Four years later, in 1936, Howard began an excavation of the Blackwater Draw site, which stood about 18 kilometers south of Clovis, New Mexico. There, he found intricately designed, fluted spear points and other human artifacts intermingled with the remains of extinct megafauna. Since then, archaeologists would unearth these same sleek fluted spear points all across North America. These artifacts became known as Clovis points, and they eventually formed the defining characteristic of the Clovis horizon, which was once thought to have been the first American culture. Chipped from jasper, chert, obsidian, and other fine, brittle stone, these spearheads have a lance-shaped tip and often possess incredibly sharp edges. Extending from the base to the tip are shallow, concave grooves called flutes, which may have allowed the points to be inserted into spear shafts. Over 10,000 of these Clovis points have been discovered all across the Americas, turning up in locations as far south as Venezuela. They seem to have appeared, by archaeological standards, rather suddenly, and spread with alarming speed. The oldest securely dated points, found in Texas, trace back 13,500 years. Clovis points are often found with the bones of megafauna, like mammoths, mastodon, sloth, and giant bison. As the climate warmed at the end of the last ice age, the habitats on which these animals depended started to disappear. They eventually neared extinction, and archaeologists have surmised that Clovis hunting on dwindling numbers of megafauna probably contributed to their disappearance. But where exactly did the creators of these artifacts come from? Who were these first Americans? Archaeologists had long believed the Clovis tradition derived from a group of indigenous Siberians who crossed into the Americas by means of a now-covered land bridge which connected western Alaska and eastern Siberia. This bridge is called the Bering Strait, or Beringia. From Beringia, Clovis people were thought to have trekked through a narrow passageway between the Cordilleran and Laurentide ice sheets, which opened up around 13,500 years ago, and then pierced into the heartland of North America. Scientists refer to this narrative as the Clovis First Model. In 1976, Clovis First came under fire when a student in Chile uncovered a set of mastodon ribs with cut marks and burn scars at the waterlogged site of Monte Verde. These bones suggest that Monte Verde could potentially be an archaeological site. The site was later excavated for years, and this revealed an undeniable trace of modern humans, including a child-sized footprint. Radiocarbon dates revealed that Monte Verde was about 14,800 years old, that's at least a thousand years older than Clovis. The researchers at Monte Verde discovered the ruins of a large forager campsite on the bank of a creek. Because Monte Verde lies below peat deposits, many of the artifacts made from organic material at the site were well preserved. For example, the surviving wooden foundations of a long, rectangular building, which was subdivided into a dozen rooms, was found. A work area with stone tools and animal remains stood near this house. Researchers have also uncovered spun grass rope, wooden lances, animal hides, and human feces at the site. Food scraps have also survived, revealing that the people at Monte Verde once gathered at least 60 different species of edible and medicinal plants. However, what's just as important as what the excavators found at Monte Verde is what they did not find. Clovis tools. Monte Verde is a remarkably well-preserved and thoroughly analyzed early American site, and yet it does not reveal evidence of Clovis habitation. The stone tools at Monte Verde, in contrast, were crude and bear no resemblance to the beautiful Clovis points. 
the news from Monte Verde nearly convinced the archaeological community that non-Clovis people had reached South America by 14,000 years ago. The Clovis first hypothesis was seemingly dead. It seems that more and more studies come out which refute the narrative of the Clovis first model. At the Buttermilk Creek site in Texas, for example, researchers have uncovered the fragments of thousands of stone tools which date to around 15,500 BCE. At an Argentinian site called the Royal Seco II, archaeologists have found butchered animal remains which have been dated to 14,000 years. Most would now agree that there were disparate groups of people in the Americas at least 2,000 years before the emergence of the Clovis tradition. However, if the narrow pass which cut through the Cordilleran and Laurentide ice sheets opened up 13,500 years ago, thus making overland travel prior to this date impossible, how did people make it into the Americas 2,000 years before the ice sheets opened up? A good handful of archaeologists believe that these early adventurers arrived in the New World by boat. They hold that if humans reached the Americas from Siberia before an interior route through Beringia opened, they must have come by sailing the seas. According to this coastal migration theory, some 16,000 years ago, the ice sheets which had covered the Pacific Northwest began to retreat. This allowed for seafaring Siberians to take advantage of coastal resources as they navigated their way down the shores of the North American West Coast, eventually reaching South America. Evidence of human habitation has been found on the Channel Islands off the coast of California. This evidence gives fuel to the coastal migration theory because it suggests that people had the skills to construct the boats necessary to reach these isolated islands. But the coastal migration theory does have its issues. For example, all of the coastal sites are about 1600 years younger than sites of the interior. Also, archaeological data from northeastern Siberia and Beringia, the regions where the first Americans are believed to have derived from, denote human populaces that were hunting various forms of megafauna. These people were not subsisting on fish and coastal resources. There is no presence of a maritime tradition in these populations. So proponents of the interior route motto argue that it is unlikely that a seafaring culture navigating the coast could have reached the Americas since this culture cannot be found in either Siberia or Beringia. Then where does this really leave us? There isn't yet a definitive answer regarding the peopling of the Americas at this moment. The academic community, though, believes that the interior route model and the coastal theory model hold merit and should be on the table of this ongoing debate. Both sides can agree on some crucial points. They each hold that northeastern Siberians had indeed traveled eastward in some way to populate the Americas. Genetic studies which sequence the ancient DNA of both Siberians and ancient American populations have revealed a strong connection between these two groups. There is also a consensus on when this migration occurred, placing the date within the last 25,000 years. Geneticists have found that this is when first American populations and ancient Siberians became genetically isolated. So we sort of know where they came from and we can produce a rough estimate on when, but we do not exactly know how the first Americans reached the New World. The archaeologist Ben A. Potter has argued that we need to take a multidisciplinary approach when tackling this issue. At the front of this effort, he believes, will need to be a cooperation with indigenous communities to collaborate on sampling and sequencing ancient DNA. Therefore, archaeology, genetics, and geology will be needed in solving the mystery of how and when the first Americans colonized the New World.